Hey friends, welcome back to Daily Sews and Stuff. Today I have a really special video for you. I did a Zoom interview with Charlotte Curtis. You might know her if you're in the Projectors for Sewing group. She is the person who created the PDF Stitcher app and it is awesome. I'll tell you all about it in the video. And following this video, there will also be another video that is a tutorial that will show you how to use the PDF Stitcher app. Um, that'll be on a card up above at some point during this video, and it will also be on the end screen. You can find a link in the description box, along with a link to donate to Charlotte, and a link to her GitHub where you can download the PDF Stitcher app. And as always, there's a link to the Projectors for Sewing group where you can find out more information about these things. I am really excited that Charlotte agreed to join me, and I learned so much, so I really hope you enjoy this as much as I did. Hi Charlotte, welcome to Daily Sews and Stuff. Um, Charlotte is a member of the Projectors for Sewing group, and she created an app, a program called PDF Stitcher that we can use on our computer to put together letter or AO sized patterns into a big pattern that we can use uh, more easily with our projector. And it also adds buffers around the edges, which sometimes even with an AO, I love to just run it through there and add those buffers, and it preserves the layers, which is awesome. So. Did I cover everything with that, Charlotte, or is there anything, any other explanation you want to give for the PDF Stitcher? That about covers it for the most part, yep. <laughs> okay, so who can use this program? <clears throat> uh, basically anybody who wants to, as long as you have a Mac or a PC running a relatively modern operating system. Okay, um, why did you create the PDF Stitcher? What was your, kind of your launching point for that? <laughs> Uh, so I discovered projector sewing. Um, well, yeah. So first of all, I, I sew, um, yes. program, uh, and I discovered projector sewing not that long ago. I'd say last summer. I don't remember where I first heard about it, but I just thought, yes, this is brilliant. I have to do it this way, obviously. Um, so I bought a projector and then the first thing I sat down to try to sew, only had letter size or A4 format. Um, and I saw some tutorials using Inkscape to import the pages and move them together. And, um, you know, a lot of people were doing things like that or screenshots in PowerPoint or, you know, these very manual ways of assembling them. Um, and I have a very low tolerance for manual sort of things that can be automated. So I kind of- Repetitive things, yeah. Yeah, I could probably automate this. Um, so the first one that I made was just a little command line utility. I, I just kind of bashed it out and thought, yeah, okay, it works. And then I posted it and people were really interested. So that's when I started making the graphical interface and you know making it an executable that's easier to use and it kind of snowballed. So what is your background? How did you think, oh, I can make this program and then make it? Uh, so I'm an engineer. Um, I actually did my undergrad in biomedical engineering, which didn't involve much programming at all. I discovered programming partway through my undergrad and thought, you know, oh, wow, this, this is really fun. I actually really like this and um, kind of drifted more and more into computers. Um, ended up doing a PhD in electrical and computer engineering. So I finished that in 2015. Um, and then, and, and even that was more um, sort of mathematical type of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I started working as a data scientist, um, which is a lot of sort of back end algorithm development. Uh, so I've been doing that job for the past five, six years. Um, and then I went on maternity leave in February, and then COVID happened. And, you know, I kind of, it turned all of our worlds upside down. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I, I just sort of, I, I thought, okay, well, I feel like I've got these technical skills that are sort of rusty and maybe I'll put them to use, you know, before I go back to work, um, which happens next week. Yes. That's why we're getting this in before you do that. So you had this background that, you know, let you know how to write programs and that it was possible to write this program. Um, and then you had to kind of, uh, if I remember right, you said you had to learn a new coding language to do it in this open source software. 
Uh, so not a new language. Um, I did everything in Python, which is not the best uh, language for graphical applications, certainly. Um, but it's one that I use a lot at work. And so I'm familiar with it. And just, it was easy. Yeah. Uh, but when I first started, I just sort of Googled, okay, PDF, library, Python, you know, that kind of thing. I knew I wanted to preserve the layers. That was really important to me. Yeah, so that's very awesome. Looking around. Yeah. So when you write programs, you don't always start from scratch, right? Like I'm not going to start by reading the 800 page document describing how a PDF is created. I'm going to go out and find someone else who's written those pieces and I'm going to use that word. That makes sense. But the first one that I found was uh, paid, like licensed commercial software. Um, I didn't really understand the limitations of the license and the trial um, stuff. So anyway, when I realized that was going to expire on me and it was extremely expensive, uh, I sort of scrambled to find a new one that was open source because I, I wanted to keep it open source. So. And so, I mean, because it's open source, it, you're not familiar with that. That means that it's a free program and it doesn't, it, it's something that other people can contribute to as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's uh, open source. There's a, t there's a phrase that people say is uh, free as in speech and free as in beer, um, <laughs> which, you know, it's kind of like, um, so it says that basically it's not just free. So it's not just I'm making this product and then giving it to people. I'm making all of the information inside it accessible as well. So anyone who wanted to can hop on my GitHub and download the code and do whatever they want to it. And if they want to contribute, they can upload their changes. Um, and yeah, so the whole, there's so, there's a huge world of open source software and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So a lot of the things that I use for um, my, my video editing and things are open source softwares, which they're free. And so sometimes we think about free as not as good, but sometimes open source softwares are even better than the paid versions because so many people who actually use the programs contribute to it. Um, so you made it a desktop app, a desktop program. You have to actually download it onto your computer. You can't use it online. Um, and I've seen some people ask in the group, you know, why you did it that way. And I was going to give you a chance to tell us why you did it that way. Uh, well, the simple reason is mainly that's what I'm familiar with. Um, so I was just using the tools that I know about. Um, I did briefly consider making it sort of a hosted web app kind of thing. Um, but other than never having done that before and not, you know, needing to learn how to do it, uh, there are sort of ongoing expenses associated with hosting things online. Um, so I just, again, in the interest of keeping it free and uh, easy, I guess, <laughs> that was sort of what I ended up doing. Um, even making it like work on a PC and a Mac ended up taking quite a bit of time because I have a, I fortunately have a really old MacBook. Um, but one thing about software that's kind of weird is whatever system you build it on, that's the one it wants to run on. Right. And make it run on different operating systems is uh, a little tricky. You usually have to go and, you know, build it on that different operating system. So, um, I, yeah, I ended up, you know, my old MacBook was so old that it was running unsupported versions of the OS. So I had to do some hacky things to make it work with a newer one and then, you know. <laughs> but in the end, you now have a Windows and a Mac version of the program. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that because it's going to be downloaded onto the computer rather than web based, you had to have each version of it. Um, but the benefits were that you could keep it free. And then, and then as long as I have power, I can use it versus have to, having to have internet, which can be a lot more iffy in my world. Um, so are there any other like, you know, challenges to the way that you did it or things that you faced whenever you were trying to make it that were so frustrating or anything like that that you want to <laughs> tell us about? 
Um, yeah, one thing that I didn't really expect is I got all these requests to have it available in different languages. Um, there's a number of different uh, projector groups on Facebook and I'm sure elsewhere on the internet uh, in, in a few different languages. Um, and so I thought, yeah, that's great. And I had all these people wanting to contribute translations, uh, but I have never done that before. I've never written a program where people actually um, use it. <laughs> um, like I said, most of what I do at work is I, I make this algorithm that kind of disappears into the back end of, of what we use. And then um, it's actually for an in-house processing thing. Right. So I, I've never, you know, actually interacted with people who use things that I do before, which is, yeah. you know, um, yeah. So getting the translation stuff to work was uh, quite a challenge, especially I couldn't, I couldn't get it to detect the system language on a Mac. So I ended up making separate versions um, in the four different languages that people have contributed. So, um, which is kind of annoying because then I have to, you know, tweak something and right. build it and then, you know, yeah. it. <laughs> um, so they, yeah. and then I guess also just dealing with all the different kind of requests. Um, people want various features that, you know, maybe I've never even thought of. Um, so trying to figure out which ones I can do and which ones people really want and that kind of thing. Um, I've been, uh, I, I posted a poll on the projectors for sewing group asking which features people really want to see. And the biggest feature that people um, have, you know, indicated that they want is being able to modify the line, line thickness and color and, you know, Because that's make... something else that we import into an Inkscape to do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've definitely run across PDFs where, you know, the size that I want to make is this like weird yeah thing in pale blue or something, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, so I've been, I have been working towards that. I have, I realize I haven't put out anything new for like a month, but. Um, but you also have a baby and <laughs> to go back to work. So, you know, you've got other things going on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. Uh, but uh, mainly it's just um, PDFs were never designed to be right. edited, really. Yeah. Like um, they're a I mean, final format. <laughs> That's why you save something as a PDF so that somebody else can't alter it. Exactly. Yeah. So it is a little tricky. There's like five different ways that the line thickness can be defined in different places. And then it's not like they'll say, oh, this is, this is the color for this layer. Like we think about it like that, but the, there's no, nothing that says it has to be like that. And then every page is independently defined and, you know, yeah. So Nitty gritty details, but I am working on it, um, and I think it is possible. Uh, so that's exciting. Yeah, that yeah. I think it is possible is very exciting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, oh. And uh, yeah, as I'm doing this, I'm learning more and more about how there, how PDFs are created. Um, most of the patterns that I have seem to be created in Illustrator. Um, I, which, that's the most popular. Yeah, exactly. So that means that they tend to follow a certain, you know, format because right. they're created using the same software. So it may be that I make something and it's like, oh, this will work if it came from Illustrator. But if, if the pattern designer used and on, something. And on our end, we don't always know. I mean, we just would have to try it and see if it worked or not. And Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because patterns are this really like important intellectual property um, of the pattern designer, it's hard for me to test uh, problems that people are having because they can't just send me a copy of the pattern and say, oh, it doesn't work on this one, you know, try it out because that's, that's the pattern designer's intellectual property and I really want to respect that. Right. Um, yeah, that's actually another reason I didn't want to do it as a web-based interface is, you know, to have people uploading a pattern that they downloaded from a designer to some random website that I'm hosting and who knows what security is like. And anyway, yeah, so that's, um, that's another challenge, I guess, or so concern. That that's kind of an important thing to talk about. Whenever we were printing patterns, we would print them and cut them and then we would do any sort of alteration on it that we needed to. Like I'm four foot 11, so I always have to make it shorter. 
um, or a full bust adjustment or a sway back adjustment or whatever else it is that you, you might be doing. So since we're using projectors now, we're trying to do all those alterations digitally. And that's kind of something that we run into, like, you know, a, a pattern designer will put a lot of protection on their PDF, which makes total sense because it's their intellectual property and they want to keep it safe. And I think most, if not all of us, respect that. Um, I mean, otherwise we wouldn't be buying patterns from them and, and supporting them in that way. But it also makes it more complicated for us when we're trying to do these digital alterations because we need to be able to manipulate it to be able to change it to fit our body. I appreciate that you are, you know, even though your program is, is altering it by stitching it together, you're still trying to preserve the integrity of the intellectual property of the designer. And that's important. Like we're not doing this because we want to, you know, get around it or share, share patterns or anything like that. We're doing this because we want to be able to use it ourselves, the people who bought the pattern. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that's a really important thing to think about, right? It's, um, it always feels a little weird to me to import something into Inkscape and then to be able to manipulate things at the, you know, nodal level. Right. Um, because it, it does feel like I'm sort of violating the uh, intellectual property of the designer. Um, ultimately, I think it would be amazing to have uh, a different format, you know, maybe not PDF, where you can load up all of the pattern pieces, um, but then rearrange the layout uh, and then maybe do some like slicing and spreading operations like you would on paper right. without actually being able to manipulate the you know the the lines of the pattern because because that changes it to a whole different design if you're exactly yeah, yeah. and I, I would feel awful if someone took what i was doing and used that to you know rip off someone's design and there's this weird gray area with with patterns area where i feel like we're all treading as lightly as we can because we want to be able to alter our patterns and use our patterns to fit our bodies but we don't want to alter the pattern as in, and maybe the better word is adjust. We all want to adjust the pattern to fit our body, but we don't want to alter it to be something totally different. But I don't, I don't know about you. I'm assuming you feel the same way. I love the designers that I buy from, and I don't want to do things that are going to put them out of business. So exactly. I'm going yeah. to do what I can to support them and to buy the pattern that I'm going to use. I try, I don't always do this, but I try to use the free patterns whenever I do things on my YouTube channel. That way I can say, don't rip this off from the pattern pieces you can see. Go download it. It's free. Like, it's so much more work to rip it off. Just go download it. Um, yeah. Because I don't want to do things that make it harder for a designer to continue to do what I love them to do. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, I have a one little test document in my um, GitHub for um, PDF Stitcher. And it's just something I made in Word that has like A1, A2, A3, and then it's got a border around it. You know, yeah. it, it's not a pattern at all. It's just a test document because um, I want to be able to demonstrate the functionality without actually violating the copyright of the, of the pattern designers that I love and respect and want right. them to do their business and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a tricky, tricky part of the world for sure. Yes. All right. So you talked about some new features that you were adding. You, you know, you never really expected to write this program in the first place. So other than adding some new features to it, do you have any plans to do something? You know, you mentioned it would be awesome to have another program. Is that something you want to work on in the future? Or are you kind of like, I did this thing and it was great, but I'm done. <laughs> Hmm. We'll see how I feel after I return to actually programming eight hours a day. Um, cause you know, yeah. when your hobby is also your job, that's a lot, right? Yes. <laughs> As I'm sure anybody who has a sewing based business would understand. Yeah. I, I think that the main functionality of PDFs are like the stitching the PDF together mm -hmm. is a very, stopgap solution like most pattern designers are starting to make projector friendly files um and you know i think that in a few years nobody will have to do this at all because people are realizing how 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 many people want the projector format i mean that group is barely over a year old and has almost thirty thousand members 
Yeah. And that's just the one Facebook group, right? Like mm -hmm. there's people who aren't on the Facebook group or on any mm -hmm. groups that are, that or that are, are in the Facebook groups based in other countries or everything mm -hmm. else. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I feel like projectors are big and, um, the need to stitch together PDFs is going to go away. Um, but that's okay. You know, it's a, it's, it's filling a need right now. And, and that's, I'm totally fine with that. Um, it's been a great learning experience for me. Uh, and as, you know, maybe as I learn more about how, um, how the PDFs are written, uh, I might try and dabble in, you know, a different sort of program that will allow you to, you know, interact with the pieces rather than just the pages. That would be great. <laughs> Um, but I mean, it sounds good, but it also sounds very complicated on the, what you say, the back end of it. Yeah. I mean, there are, uh, there are things that do that, right? Like when you, when you load it into Inkscape, it does split out the lines and everything. Right. So, you know, the, the technology is there. <laughs> um, but yeah, to, to make something like that that's you know really targeted at sewing patterns and user friendly and all that stuff that's that's kind of a big job i don't know if that's going to happen but um i would say that would be my ultimate dream yeah, <laughs> if I that'd be awesome be. um but yeah for now i'm just working on trying to make lines thicker yes <laughs> um and so i'm actually going to record a tutorial for how to use the PDF stitcher, how to download it. There's a step that seems to really cause problems where you, when you download it, you need to tell your computer, hey, it's okay, actually download this. So I'll go and, and make that and um, share that on my channel as well. And uh, you'll be able to see how you can use it to, you know, add the border, stitch the pieces together. Um, if you have a pattern where you have to trim it, when you print it, you, you know, trim it and then you tape it together, there's a way to do that in the program. I feel like you have thought of so much and then you had a little bit of feedback and incorporated that really well and it works amazing. I, I really like using it even, as I said earlier, if I have an AO that doesn't have enough white space around it, it's so quick and easy just to run it through there real fast and then um, it's done. And in fact, one time I did it and I had already started uh, adjusting the pattern and uh, with you know, drawing on it on, on Adobe. And I ran it through the PDF stitcher and I was like, oh, I'm going to lose all that. And I didn't, I was still, oh. it's still, it was still there. Another time I did it and it disappeared. So I think that has to do with the, maybe the protections that the designer had put on it originally. I don't know. I actually have no idea. Um, so basically what it does is it just takes every page and packages that page into a little element that it can then place on a different page. And yeah. then it, puts them all on one big page. So I, I guess maybe it just wraps up any notes or um, lines you've drawn sometimes. I don't know. It was really, it was unexpected and very cool, but it just adds that white space where you can move it around where you need to on your, on your projected image. And it's just, it's, I think something none of us expected to happen. Um, we know when we were doing this all did manually and stuff and I don't, most of us, who are sewing are not programmers. And I mean, I'm not afraid of computers. I'll be happy to use them, but I've never written a program. I wouldn't even think to write a program. And then you came along and you're like, this is a problem I can solve. And you did. And it's <laughs> awesome. So thank you so much for that. And if anybody watching wants to thank you monetarily, you did set up a link that I'll put in the comments where somebody can do that. The program is free. It is open source. There is no obligation to do that. But, um, and Charlotte might want to disagree with this, but I will say it is an amazing program and it is well worth paying for. So if you want to, you know, throw a few dollars her way for that, um, there'll be a link in the description box where you can do that. Well, um, thank you. I'm, I'm so, I, it's so motivating to me to see how many people are using it and enjoy it. And, you know, it, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for writing it. And thank you so much for coming and talking to us. And, um, Stay tuned for the tutorial so you can know how to use the PDF Stitcher. And we will have another interview soon with Missy, uh, Missy Poor, who actually started this whole 
projectors for sewing group. And that'll be another really interesting thing to find out how that all started. I am so excited Charlotte joined me and I learned so much and I hope that you did too. I, as I said, I will be creating a tutorial that will be coming out around the same time this video does. So you can check the end cards, check the uh, cards above and check the description box to find that video and learn how to use PDF Stitcher. I will walk you through downloading it to projecting with it. Please subscribe to the channel so that you can catch all my new videos as they come out. There's some good stuff coming this year. Thanks guys. Keep watching my videos, like, subscribe, and comment.